county that has always prized transparency and accountability in the expenditure of public funds. While I commend the volunteers who work on the Executive's Arts Ball for their dedication and commitment, I do not believe the enterprise benefits from its unwillingness to disclose its finances, and I continue to encourage the Arts Ball to disclose this information, as most charities routinely do. The Executive's Arts Ball was founded by Betty Mae Kramer in 1986. Through the 1990s, funds raised were dispersed to the Arts and Humanities Council of Montgomery County for distribution to arts and humanities organizations. The Arts and Humanities Council in the 1990s devoted one staff position to managing the ball, paid for out of its administrative budget, and did not charge the ball any overhead. The ball has always been run by a volunteer committee. A disagreement occurred between the Arts and Humanities Council and the Executive Arts Ball Committee, leading to the proceeds of the ball in calendar 2011 to be donated to libraries rather than to the arts. As I understand it, the root of the disagreement was the Arts and Humanities Council's request that $22,000 of the ball's proceeds be spent to cover the Arts and Humanities Council's expenses in running the ball. The Arts Ball Committee felt this amount of money was too much to spend on overhead. And subsequently, the decision was made not to have the Arts and Humanities Council run the ball, but rather to have funds raised and dispersed by the Executive's Arts Ball Committee. In calendar 2012 and calendar 2013, the funds were once again raised to benefit the Arts and Humanities. We do not know how much was raised or spent in those years. In FY 2014, for the first time, the County Council was asked to provide $200,000 in matching funds under the theory that these matching funds would increase the willingness of private donors to give to the Arts Ball. We appropriated those funds in FY 2014 and FY 2015. As far as we know, the Ball did not raise the full 200000 in either of those years. Instead, the Arts and Humanities Council was asked to award 152025 in matching funds in FY 2014 and 155200 in FY 2015. The remainder was dispersed to the Arts and Humanities Council to match a small donor program called power to give. For fiscal 2016, the County Council agreed to appropriate another 200000 to match ball proceeds, but these funds were taken away as part of the savings plan adopted in July of 2015. The County Council has not received information as to how much money the Arts Ball raised or dispersed in FY 2016. This year, the Executive Arts Ball has again requested that 200000 be appropriated to match funds to be raised at the calendar 2016 ball. Last December, I was asked by a constituent who was interested in donating to the Arts Ball whether its revenues and expenses were available to the public. The constituent wanted to know the percentage of funds raised that are devoted to overhead rather than direct support for the Ball's purpose. Most charities routinely disclose this information. The constituent had looked for the Arts Ball's Form 990 but found it didn't have one because it is administered under the Community Foundation of Montgomery County, which does not itemize the Arts Ball's finances separately for public review. When I asked the Arts and Humanities Council for this information, I was told the Arts and Humanities Council didn't have it. I decided to ask for the information from the Executive Arts Ball Committee as part of our routine budget process. I didn't think this request would be controversial. In March and April, in preparation for this committee's work, Council staff asked OMB for four years of revenues and expenses for the Executive's Arts Ball. OMB replied, as it did here, that the Executive's Arts Ball is a private organization and OMB doesn't have any information regarding its revenues and expenses. As this committee assessed whether to appropriate 200000 in matching funds, it seemed to me it would be useful to compare the Ball's FY 2014 and FY 2015 proceeds when matching funds were provided with its FY 2016 proceeds when matching funds were not provided. This would give the committee a basis to judge whether the availability of matching funds did indeed increase donations. I am also interested in knowing whether there is any overhead associated with running the ball, since a disagreement regarding overhead costs led to the decision in 2011 to take the ball away from the Arts and Humanities Council. Questions regarding the Arts Ball have been referred to a Ms. Susie Leong, coordinator for the Arts Ball. I do not know whether Ms. Leong is paid or whether she is a volunteer. The ball committee has not disclosed its overhead. In response to this committee's query, the chair of the Executive's Arts Ball sent a letter to my home on April 21st saying, in part, the Executive's Ball's committee's records of its receipt and expenditures are not secret and will be available to the public, but they are not subject to a governmental demand as a right as expressed by you. Under these circumstances, I cannot support appropriating $200,000 of public funds 
to match the proceeds of the Executive's Arts Ball. We are only asking the Arts Ball for information that we would expect routinely of any other nonprofit organization doing business with the county. I cannot imagine, for example, that if the Friends of the Library were asked for four years of its financials by this committee, that it would not disclose them. The committee is not singling out the Arts Ball for unusual scrutiny. The only reason this has been elevated to a public discussion is the unwillingness of the Arts Ball to provide the information. I want to make it very clear that the committee's questions regarding the Arts Ball's financials arose wholly from my interpretation of my responsibility to perform due diligence regarding the expenditure of public funds. The Arts and Humanities Council did not suggest that I ask these questions, and its CEO, Susan Jenkins, is in no way responsible for the committee asking them. Ms. Jenkins is in a very difficult position. Arts organizations must perennially scramble to cover their expenses, and Ms. Jenkins frequently bears the brunt of organizations' complaints that they are not getting enough. A recent effort by the Arts and Humanities Council to treat all arts organizations equitably led to a complaint by the National Philharmonic that its annual funding was being cut because it was being reduced from 11% of its operating budget to 5% to bring its funding into conformance with other similarly sized organizations. This is an example of the damned if you do, damned if you don't dilemma facing Ms. Jenkins. If she were ex to accede to the National Philharmonic's request to restore its earlier amount of funding, she would have to take funds away from other arts organizations who would surely complain. The Council is now being asked to bail out the National Philharmonic because that organization has been unable to cover its costs and faces significant arrearages that threaten its continued viability. This committee, along with the Government Operations Committee, will return to that issue on Friday. The National Philharmonic's case illustrates what happens when publicly funded arts organizations are subject to insufficient oversight. Given the tension that exists in the arts community over fairness and equity, I would like to see public arts funds distributed in a manner that is not arbitrary and is based upon merit. This is another reason why I cannot support appropriating 200,000 of public funds to match the proceeds of the Executive's Arts Ball. When matching funds were dispersed in fiscal years 2014 and 2015 by the Arts and Humanities Council, they were dispersed without explanation as to what funding formula was used. They simply matched the directive received from the Executive's Ball Committee. Mr. Berliner's assertion in a recent article in the Sentinel that the Arts and Humanities Council determined the amounts to be dispersed is incorrect. At this committee's April 19 meeting, I asked OMB whether the Executive Arts Ball was one of the events that is hosted by the North Bethesda Marriott with no charge to Montgomery County for meeting room rental fees. OMB did not answer my question. However, in response to my question during the Fed Committee's discussion of the Conference Center NDA, we learned that the Arts Ball is indeed one of those events negotiated between the county and the Conference Center. So regardless of when, whether any government funds are expended to support the Arts Ball, it does receive a significant subsidy through the county's ownership of the Conference Center. In addition, in the Fed Committee yesterday, we learned that the Recreation Department had spent $17,000 in fiscal 2016 for sponsorships of various events including the Montgomery County Executive Hispanic Gala. These funds in FY 2016 were never appropriated or approved by the County Council. Other departments also sponsored the Montgomery County Executive Hispanic Gala without any appropriation having been made for this purpose. This naturally gives rise to the question whether public funds have been expended on the Arts Ball without having been appropriated by the Council, as in the case of the Montgomery County Executive Hispanic Gala. So given the options, uh, offered by staff, I would suggest that we take the 200000 and give it to the Arts uh, by allocating it in the routine way to the Arts and Humanities Council for distribution through its formulas. Therefore, the recipients would be the same recipients. They would benefit in the same way, but it would be allocated through a mechanism which is transparent and publicly explained.